Do you think that Seer is too strong? You should have seen him at his strongest in August 21 because he was busted. Today, we're going to go over every Apex Legends at their most broken state. Let's just dive into it. Bangalore had a long streak of being completely broken, just being unnoticed for almost two years as it was exploited on console lobbies out of sight and out of mind from the bigger streamers. Up until early 2022, Bangalore used to be able to smoke her own feet, position herself in a specific position of the smoke and be able to see out of it. While the enemies can't see her, on the inside. To make matters worse, the Bangalore in the smoke still had aim assist, and this was a big deal as aim assist is supposed to turn off on targets inside of smoke. The streamer who brought this into PC lobbies was Shuby, and after the whole PC community brought this bug to respawn's attention, it was quietly changed after the Olympus ranked split that year. The one-way smokes is still doable, but the players who abuse it no longer get aim assist when doing so, meaning that now it's a lot more manageable. Bloodhound has received buffs ever since they came out with the game back in 2019, but other than a few odd patches here and there can't ever really stand out in the spotlight for too long. They're currently in their strongest state, but are overshadowed by the likes of Seer doing everything Bloodhound does, but better. <laughs> Caustic is annoying to deal with in the right circumstance against the wrong team, but overall manageable. The same couldn't be said before his traps could be destroyed after activated. Currently, activated barrels have 150 health points after activated and will be destroyed after the fact. But back then, activating the barrels meant that they'd stay active, pumping out the gas and stalling up the fight for a whole 11 seconds. Seconds. Throne barrels also wouldn't be caught by Watson's ultimate, allowing caustic teams to push up and entrench Watson teams and lob barrels in through the windows to gas them out. Not only that, but the gas dealt 4 to 10 damage per tick, increasing by 1 damage per tick, and traps couldn't be triggered through doors like they can today. Crypto is technically at his strongest state right now, but despite all the buffs, he is still not meta. I wanted to give a worthwhile mention to this bug, which allowed him to use his drone to teleport to any replicator. Fuse was released in a fragile state and received a handful of buffs to bring him to where he is today. He continues seeing the odd quality of life buff, but is currently at his strongest level. Gibraltar, on the other hand, has seen a lot of changes and even dominated the high-ranked and competitive meta for, what, eight seasons before being brought to an end. Before January 14th in 2022, his gun shield tanked up to 75 damage without any bleed through, meaning Gibraltar could take a full Kraber shot and just shake it off. It also wasn't affected by Revenant Silence, effectively adding 75 more health to his already high health pool. His tactical had an 18 second duration rather than 12 and his ultimate used to have a three minute cooldown rather than the painstakingly long four and a half minutes that we have today and horizon was released way too overtuned her tactical being the main culprit as you went up the lift significantly faster your side to side acceleration was almost like fast strafes and you could stay at the very top of the lift for almost the entire duration the lift's cooldown would start the second you threw it out meaning it only had an effective cooldown of 16 seconds and seeing as the lift stays active for 10 seconds meant that you're tactical only had a six second downtime also her ultimate didn't take friendly fire or take more damage from grenades and used to have a two minute cooldown rather than the three that we have today lifeline has been all over the place as far as her balance goes with her strongest state being unreleased with the game in 2019 her passive used to give her a 25 percent fast heal and her second active passive gave her a shield that would defend her and one teammate that she chose to revive this shield would stay up for as long as the lifeline held the revive meaning that it could be spammed on and off by starting and canceling the revive, making her a massive pain to fight against. She was great and absolutely slept on as a solo queue pub stomping legend, but at this time she was also very popular in competitive because also her drone didn't get destroyed in the circle, meaning that the fast heal plus infinite drone allowed her to stay alive and out heal the zone in the final circles, leading to a heal off meta that just sucked. Mirage used to have a completely different ultimate, which was called Vanishing Act. This ultimate did kind of work a little bit like his current one as he sent out a group of static clones that stood around in a circle after activation, but the main kicker being that Mirage just vanished. Using his ultimate would turn Mirage invisible for about 3 seconds and allow him to reposition completely. Octane's stim used to have a 4 second cooldown instead of its 1 second cooldown we have today. Not that it was that bad, especially seeing as it only used to cost 12 health per stim instead of the 20 we have now. In addition, this version of Octane also didn't have any mid-air bullet inaccuracy when taking a jump pad, meaning you could beam anyone you wanted to when you were mid-air. Also, this fun bug right here allowed you to stack the stim effect infinitely, which Moki Sniper made sure to make the most of. Pathfinder has also kind of been all over the place, currently seeing a huge pick rate despite honestly being in a pretty bad shape. Before this guy, the Pathfinder GOAT, decided to put the grapple on a 35 second cooldown, Pathfinder's grapple had as little as a static 13 second cooldown, which allowed you to fly around the map and never stop moving if your grapples were good enough. And to be fair, during this time he did have low profile and took extra damage, but the grapples were just so fun. For some 
sometime in the earlier days of Apex, Pathfinder also had a Swiss cheese hitbox. This was a very troublesome time to play the game, as bullets went straight through gaps in his hitbox, making him a nightmare to fight against. Revenant is a... Shit. <laughs> Revenant is a shadow of his former self. You see what I did there? Shadow? Because of his shadow? Whatever. So before the March 9th patch in 2021, there were no visual indicators where the totem was placed, making it a lot harder to identify where Revenant and his teammates would be coming from. You also wouldn't be slowed after getting recalled to the totem. The silence used to be 20 seconds long instead of the current 15, and the death totem would last for 30 seconds instead of the current 25. This was also during a time where Octane was meta for the devastating and very hated Revenant Octane meta. And if you think that Seer is bad now. Just wait until you hear how bad he was on release. He was released in such a broken state that people thought it would kill the game. <gasps> Seer's passive Heart Seeker used to be much faster and used to have arrows poking out from the center circle showing you if you were scanning in the general direction of where an enemy was, but was somehow off target, which was hard as it had a massively larger field of view and you could scan an enemy by just looking in their general direction. This ability had a range of 75 meters, but if your enemy happened to be farther away, it still told you with the reticle lighting up blue instead. And also, it didn't slow you down as you used it. And while you might think, yeah, his tactical is pretty annoying nowadays, wait until you hear how bad it was on release because despite all of the wacky effects it has today of scanning someone for 8 seconds, cancelling heals, silencing them, and showing the health over their head, it also detonated faster, did 10 damage, flashed your screen, and blinded you. It even made your screen shake. It didn't have a movement penalty, and was really, really loud. Absolutely crazy. Valkyrie had a pretty significant change more recently where her passive VTOL jets wouldn't take as much fuel to activate or use in general. They were slightly faster and on top of that, Valkyrie wouldn't get slowed when shot using the jets. Her tactile used to add a aim or turn slow if hitting a target, it would slow for longer than it currently does and its explosion radius was noticeably larger. You could also hover near infinitely by holding your VTOL jets and a tactical at the same time. This just flat out suspended you in the air. Her ultimate was a 25 percent higher, allowing you to clear most chokes in the game and having tons of distance to spare. Valkyrie would also be able to spin around when activating her ultimate to make her more difficult to hit. Watson recently received a huge rework to bring her in line with the more modern legends, but I just wanted to bring light to her old defensive pylon, which worked the same way the current one does, except you could have up to three of them deployed at the same time. And of course, Wraith in her current form is so weak compared to her peak, because before June 23rd, all the way back in 2020, her tactical used to be in Instant, not needing the unnecessary finger wiggle and instead popping after a quick 0.4 second animation and also didn't have the movement slowdown that we have today. Her portal also used to have a 2.5 minutes cooldown instead of the 3.5 today and would have a range of roughly 100 meters rather than the 75 meters that we have now. Not only that, but portals didn't disappear in the zone, meaning you could stall out the final circle by running between your portals, further adding to the heal off meta we had in the competitive and ranked Apex Legends. And of course, for a short while, Wraith could also use her weapon mid face I was also able to place infinite portals back in the summer of 19. And if you want to hear more about these fun bugs, check out the video on the screen. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all tomorrow.